You make a great water bearer. Thank you. <laughs> Good to, it's nice that you went behind the ears because if there has been tearing from the eyes, that'll collect behind the ears a little bit. So a little later, we'll work on our hair and you know lay it out so it's nice looking. Great. So this would be the point where, if we wanted to keep her eyes closed and her mouth closed, there are several ways of doing it. Um, you can sometimes just, may I place my hands on your eyes? Okay. You can sometimes just close the eyes and keep your fingers there for a few minutes and that's enough to uh, keep the eyes closed. Or you can close the eyes and then place an eye pillow on top. But if you don't have an eye pillow, you can use a bag of rice or beans, just something that has a little bit of weight to it to keep the eyes closed. And then the mouth, you can hold the jaw just to keep the mouth closed and hold it for, I found that 10 minutes usually is plenty of time. Or you can have a cloth, a, either a face cloth or a towel that you put underneath. And then for this, I would probably need to put the head on a pillow mm -hmm. to keep it shut. And then the time-honored way is um, mm. to use a tie. Mm. And we'll just, just to show this, just under the chin, and tie it to the top of the head, yeah. Now, it doesn't have to stay like this for a long time. It's really and just until rigor mortis is set in and um, it'll stay by itself after that. So you don't have to leave the tie on the whole time. And please correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, since you're the nurse, you have more knowledge about this, but rigor mortis comes and goes. So the, the best possible solution is to have the um, body with the eyes closed and the mouth closed as, and straightened as soon as possible after death because rigor mortis is going to stay, set in and then it'll be hard to move the body. But, but it tends to come and go. So first it's, uh, you know, the body's pretty stiff and then it loosens and relaxes and then it becomes stiff again and then loosening and relaxing. So that's the process. And on the arms and legs, if, if they are stiff and you want to move them, you can massage the area and that will make them um, easier to move. Is there any um, benefit to maybe either cold or hot temperature in accomplishing the positioning? That's a great question and to my knowledge, I think we tend to keep things more on the cool side just mm -hmm. because that slows the decomposition. Mm -hmm. But in terms of working with the body, that's a great question. And do you know the answer to that? Susan? I don't. But I know that it does get to a point that really nothing's going to mm -hmm. loosen the body enough to calm it down. Mm -hmm. and, and there are also people who, the elderly, sometimes they're, they're you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, in such positions that you can't really do a lot with them anyway. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the goal is to make them look as comfortable as in the, wherever they're going to be lying as mm -hmm. possible. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready for the uh, arms and uh, top, tops of the shoulders. Now since um, she has clothes on, we're not going to use water on mm -hmm. <laughs> her shoulders, etc. But we'll go ahead and wash the lower part of the arms and then the hands. So if you'll just take them out from underneath the cover. And yeah, great. great. Are you cold? I mean, after we put the stamp cloth on you, would you like me to dry you oh, off I'm also? Fine. Okay. I'm fine. <laughs> you can also just take a bath towel and put it under the whole length of the arm, and that way you wouldn't be so 
nervous about splashing a little bit water mm -hmm. <clears throat> of water and so on to make it a little bit convenient for the person doing it. Wanna do the other side now? Gotcha. If this person had been attended by hospice and it, perhaps the hospice nurse had visited in the morning and the person died in the afternoon and a, a bath had been given in the morning by an aide or something, then you wouldn't have to go through a thorough washing. It might be it's more, more than for the, for the process of yeah, the family yeah. than the actual necessity. Yeah. It's more the ritual mm -hmm. aspect of it. And that maybe the scents and the oils and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, yeah. you wouldn't need to really wash thoroughly because mm -hmm. they might have right. been sweaty and mm -hmm. so on in the process of dying, and you want to mm -hmm. remove that. So then, to do the um, <coughs> top part, we'll want to do the chest, and then we're going to roll on the side and do the back. So. You know, here it really comes to, um, it's really up to the family about the modesty, etc. So we'll just, if you want to just roll that back to the waist, and then let me get another little towel. So it may be that uh, our family is sort of, uh, it's more modest, and so we would want to cover Aunt Rose with a towel so that she um, would, um, I guess just have more modesty. <laughs> and it's really, you know, mm -hmm. Aunt Rose doesn't care, she's dead. So. But it's really just for the comfort of the family. Mm -hmm. So if the washers will just sort of, um, you won't be actually doing the washing, but just sort of do this as the strokes would. And Susan, do you have ways that you like to keep um, the modesty of the patient no, when you're it's, doing? It's pretty you know, unique to each case, I guess. And also, mm -hmm. yeah, just whatever you can, and whoever's in the room. If it's all daughters, you know, mm -hmm. that, that plays a, you know, makes a difference. But um, poor you. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going to turn to. Where you are. Um, we're going to turn to do the back. So we'll need two people over here. One people with hands sort of on the hips. There you go. And then the other with the hands on the shoulder. If we just bend this knee up, I think mm -hmm. that helps a lot with the turning. Excellent, excellent. And then you, the two people. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, you cover. Yeah. Like you had mentioned before, Donna, with the temperature of the water, and if you pinch mm -hmm. the person, it's yeah. not a big yeah. deal since they're dead. But. And with that same thought in mind, is really this is the key to keeping the those odors down that people worry about having your body really a, a thorough cleaning. You know, especially in the private area, is really important to you know make sure there's no feces or um, urine left on the body. So you don't you know you don't want to be too gentle, but I know with this situation you do. But you know, in general, you'll don't worry about how much scrubbing you're doing, you know, and if they're going to be worried about feeling that. Cause mm -hmm. And in the, in the dying process, isn't there often a release of... of Usually, yeah. 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 yeah, so you really want to make sure that's clean. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. clean that up. Mm -hmm. So we might change the cloths even at this point. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Those, 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 like those or it could be done right at the beginning, mm -hmm. right before there's any yeah. washing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, pl place her back on her back, and we'll show you what one person recommends. And usually if a person has been uh, ill for some time, it's very normal that the last few days they're not going to want to eat or have food. Mm -hmm. So the fluids of the body uh, aren't... Minimized. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you, they're minimized. So um, one person suggests that you just press on the belly to um, re 